Hello students, welcome to lecture 4 of chemical equilibrium. I will start with recap which I did in the last lecture that is your in the last lecture I discussed about leach at earlier's principle. The most important use of leach at earlier's principle is we can know under what condition a reaction can give maximum product or reaction can give maximum yield. What do I mean by condition? We can change concentration, we can change pressure, we can change volume and we can change temperature. So, if we understand leach at earlier's principle, we will be able to tell if I increase the temperature, whether reaction will go to right hand side means more product will be formed or less product will be formed. Similarly, if I increase the pressure and what will happen to the reaction, whether reaction will shift towards forward direction or reaction will shift towards reverse direction. What leach at earlier principle tells you? It tells you that if we alter the conditions, for example, pressure, temperature or volume, we can disturb the equilibrium, we can disturb the equilibrium. Finally, a new equilibrium will be established. This principle tells you that new equilibrium will be in which direction, whether equilibrium will shift to right hand side or left hand side. The law tells you that equilibrium will shift to that direction which tends to minimize the change. Equilibrium will shift to that direction which tends to minimize the change. Then we looked at the effect of increase in pressure. So, suppose I am increasing the pressure that can be done by decreasing the volume. Okay. I showed you that in that case delta if delta n is positive reaction will move towards reverse direction or reverse reaction will be favored. What I mean by delta n is your change in stoichiometry. So, basically it is the stoichiometry of product minus stoichiometry of reactant. If this is positive, then reverse reaction will be favored. If it is negative, then forward reaction will be favored when we increase the pressure. So, this is about when I increase the pressure. So, if reaction has delta n is positive, increase in pressure will favor the reverse reaction, whereas if delta n is negative, increase in pressure will favor forward reaction. Pressure can be changed in another way, pressure can be changed, can be changed by introducing introducing your inert gas, inert gas. So, first condition we discuss that when we change pressure by decreasing the volume or increasing the volume, pressure will be increased if we decrease the volume whereas, pressure will decrease when we increase the volume. But we can increase the volume, uh, we can increase the pressure by introducing inert gas, keeping volume constant. So, suppose I am taking a closed container, closed container and then we have molecules of A and B, A is your reactant, B is product, I can increase the pressure by introducing another gas which does not interact with A or B. 
which does not interact with A and B and that is basically you are introducing inert gas. Overall pressure is increased, volume has not increased. Okay? In that case what happens? So, I discussed this reaction P C L 5 gas giving you P C L 3 gas plus C L 2 gas, C L 2 gas. In this case K P can be written as pressure of P C L 3 into pressure of C L 2 divided by pressure of P C L 5 and pressure is your mole fraction of P C L 3 multiplied by total pressure into mole fraction of C L 2 multiplied by total pressure divided by mole fraction of P C L 5 into total pressure. And then this can be written and mole fraction can be written as N of P C L 3 divided by N T, where N T is total amount of gas, total number of gases molecule. This not only includes reactant and product, but also includes inert gas. So, N T multiplied by N C L 2 divided by N T into P. is also into P okay, divided by again N P C L 5 by N T into P. 1 P, 1 P cancels out, 1 N T, 1 N T cancels out. So, what we are left with N P C L 3 into N C L 2 divided by N P C L 5 okay, and then one pressure left this side pressure by N T. So, now you see you have this quantity and K P your the direction will depend on whether P by N T is increasing or decreasing. If it increases then what will happen? This value will decrease to keep K P constant while if this decreases this will increase to keep K P constant. So, what happens? You see P by N T, I told you that reaction was carried out in closed container. What does that mean is you have a constant volume condition. Under constant volume and temperature, your P by N T is constant, P by N T is constant. And so, basically this does not change it and so there is no need for change in this quantity. What does that mean is that introduction of inert gas will not have an effect on a reaction. If reaction is, if pressure is increased by addition of inert gas at constant volume. So, in a closed container, in a closed container, container which means constant volume system introduction of introduction of inert gas, inert gas does not have effect on the reaction. Even if there is there is increase in increase in pressure, increase in pressure. But suppose if I carry out reaction which has a cylinder, which is a like piston, okay, and then you have reactant, you have 
product. And now what you did is you increase the volume, increase the volume such that if I introduce inert gas, if I introduce inert gas, the pressure is constant, total pressure is constant, total pressure constant, but volume changes, a volume increased, volume changes. Okay? So, this volume is greater than, so this is V 2, if suppose volume is this, this is V 1, V 2 is greater than V 1 and introduction of inert gas does not, introduction of inert gas does not increase the pressure, pressure is kept constant, in that case what will happen. So, let us again discuss this reaction P C L 5 gas going to P C L 3 gas plus C L 2 gas. So, K p is equal to your again pressure of P C L 3 multiplied by pressure of C L 2 by pressure of P C L 5. And this is mole fraction means N of P C L 3 by N t multiplied by our total pressure into N C L 2 by N T into total pressure divided by N P C L 5 by N T into total pressure. One pressure, one pressure cancels out N T, one N T, N T cancels out. So, this is basically this N P C L 3 into N C L 2 divided by N P C L 5 and multiplied by your P by N T. Now, you see this P is constant and your N T is changing, N T increased because you introduce the, you introduce the inert gas. If you introduce the inert gas and N T is changing, since N T is in denominator, basically increase in N T means P by N T is decreasing, P by N T decreased. So, this must increase to compensate for your K P, to keep K P constant, this value should increase since P by N T is smaller, P by N T is smaller. When that will increase? This will only increase when your N P C L 3 or uh, N P C L 3 and N C L 2 will increase. It means reaction goes towards forward direction, reaction goes towards forward direction. So, if N T is delta N is, where delta N is your, your uh, difference between your stoichiometry of product minus stoichiometry of reactant, if this is positive as in case of your P C L 5 going to P C L 3 plus C L 2, your introduction of introduction of inert gas, inert gas at constant pressure at constant pressure will, will shift the reaction to reaction to forward direction forward direction to forward direction. So, this is about effect of inert gas inert gas will change the pressure, inert gas may not change the pressure. So, 
the shift in reaction will depend on under what condition you are carrying out the reaction. Okay. So, now pressure volume is done what we will do is we will go to temperature effect of temperature effect of temperature on equilibrium. effect of temperature on equilibrium. So, effect of temperature will depend on whether reaction is effect of temperature will depend on whether reaction is reaction is exothermic exothermic or endothermic endo if reaction is your exothermic if reaction is is exothermic exothermic so basically delta h is your negative what does this mean? Exothermic means A plus B giving you C plus D and heat is released, thus heat released. In this case, if I increase the temperature, if we increase the temperature, increase the temperature, temperature reaction will shift towards that side, the reaction will shift will shift to the direction where heat is absorbed, where heat is absorbed. Absorb. Since in exothermic heat is released, so heat is absorbed for a reverse reaction. So, if I increase the temperature, if I increase the temperature, the reaction will shift towards your reverse direction. Reaction will shift towards reverse direction. So, basically, exothermic reaction, exothermic reactions exothermic reactions are favored at low temperature if i go to if i take a reaction which is endothermic Okay, endothermic. Endothermic. It means your heat is absorbed. Heat is absorbed. Delta H is your greater than zero. So it is positive. In this case, if I increase the temperature, if we increase the temperature. the temperature, if we increase the temperature, forward reaction will be favored. Favor. Since in the forward reaction heat is absorbed, in the forward reaction heat is absorbed, favored. Now, let us understand what happens to K p? To K p with temperature, with temperature. Before that, we told that K p does not change with number of moles of pressure. 
pressure or volume. But K P depends on temperature, but K P depends on temperature, K P depends on temperature. Uh, the equation which governs the effect of the effect of your temperature, the equation which governs effect of temperature on K P or K C is given by del log K P by del T at constant pressure is equal to delta H naught by R T square, R T square. Okay. So, K P will depend on the temperature dependence of K P will depend on delta H naught. So, if I take endothermic reaction endothermic reaction reaction your k p increases with increase in temperature increase in temperature while k p for exothermic reaction exothermic reaction K P decreases with increase in temperature. K P decreases means your product will will decrease and reactant will increase. increase and that means is that reverse reaction reaction is favored reverse reaction is favored so in summary your exothermic reaction, exothermic reactions are favored at low temperatures, low temperature, whereas endothermic endothermic reactions are reactions are favored at favored at high temperature now let's take some example and see what happens when we increase the temperature, so effect of temperature. So, first reaction is your SO2 gas plus O2 gas giving you SO3 gas. So, when SO2 reacts with O2 to give SO3, your heat is released, heat is released and it is an exothermic reaction and delta H is equal to minus 180 kilo joule, delta H is equal to minus 180 kilo joule per mole. Since this is a 
exothermic reaction if I want to increase the product what should we do? We should go to low temperature, we should decrease the temperature because exothermic reactions are favored by exothermic reactions are favored by your are favored at low temperature low temperature. So, if we want higher yield of SO3, higher yield of SO3, we should decrease the temperature. Now, let us take dissociation of N2O4. The second reaction is dissociation of dissociation of N2O4. So, N2O4 gas dissociating to 2 NO2 gas, 2 NO2 gas, okay. N2O4 dissociating to NO2 gas. In this case, your reaction is basically endothermic. It means that heat is absorbed during the process. Heat is absorbed during the process, delta H is positive. So, if we want more dissociation, if we want more dissociation, we have to increase the temperature. We have to increase the temperature because endothermic reactions are endothermic reactions are endothermic reactions are your favored at. endothermic reactions are favored at high temperature. You can think of about several different cases. For example, methanol production CO gas plus 2 S 2 gas giving you C S 3 O H gas and delta H naught is equal to delta H is equal to minus 270 kilo joule per mole, kilo joule per mole. Now, again you see this, to know the effect of, to know the effect of temperature on a reaction, we must know whether it is, a, the reaction is happening with release of heat or absorption of heat. In this case, heat is released and so this reaction will be favored at low temperature, low temperature means if we decrease the temperature, we are, we can expect to get higher amount of methanol higher amount of methanol. Now, we can use it in a opposite sense also. So, suppose a reaction A plus B going to C plus D, let us take this in gases form. Okay. If we know that with increase in temperature, increase in temperature, product is increasing. Product is increasing. That will give you clue about whether heat is absorbed or released in a reaction. Since product is favored, when I increase the temperature, it means that heat must have been absorbed in the system or absorbed during the reaction. What does that mean is that your reaction is endothermic reaction. So, reaction is endothermic.
reaction is endothermic. On the other hand, I get with increase in temperature, increase in temperature, the amount of product decreased. Decreased. Then we can simply see that your reaction is exothermic reaction is exothermic, reaction is exothermic. So, just by looking at reactant and product, uh, how much they increased when we increase the temperature, we can tell whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic, heat is absorbed or released. So, we just saw that effect of concentration, pressure, inert gas and temperature on the equilibria. Now, we know what will happen if I increase the temperature, if I increase the pressure, if I introduce the inert gas and we can know in which direction reaction will shift and that can be applied if I want to increase the product, if we want to increase the product. So, this information will help you whenever you are trying to carry out a synthesis. So, let us go and see some more examples. Some more examples, for example, let us take this case S2 plus I2, S2 gas plus I2 gas, giving you 2 HI gas. HI gas. Now, suppose I want to know the effect of your pressure, effect of pressure, effect of pressure. effect of pressure. So, you must remember that last time I did showed you what will happen when we alter the condition. So, see this I just want to show you that we discussed what will be the effect of increase in pressure. If delta n is positive a reverse reaction will favored with increase in pressure. Whereas, if delta n is negative then forward reaction will be favored with increase in pressure. Now, let us see what is delta n here. So, delta n is your you see this case 2 moles of H i. So, 2 this is the product minus reactant, reactant is what 1 plus 1. So, this is 0, this is 0. So, what does that mean is pressure will not affect, pressure will not affect the reaction. If suppose we increase the volume to double, pressure will decrease, but since del n is 0, so even the effect there will no, no, no effect of increasing or decreasing the volume no effect of inert gas either. Even at constant pressure, since del n is 0, only thing which can affect this reaction is temperature. So, if it is an endothermic reaction, the effect of temperature will be different and if it is exothermic, effect of temperature will be different. Now, let us take another example. 4 N S 3 gas plus 5 O 2 gas giving you 4 N O gas plus 6 S 2 O gas, 6 S 2 O gas. So, let us see whether it is balanced or not 4 nitrogen, 4 nitrogen, 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen, 
10 oxygen, 4 oxygen plus 6 oxygen, your 10 oxygen. So, this is your balance equation and we want to see the effect of pressure, volume, inert gas or temperature. So, let us see delta n. First, we have to calculate delta n and uh, delta n is your stoichiometry of product. So, 4 plus 6 10 minus 4 plus 5 9 is equal to 1. So, it is positive, it is greater than 0. It means there will be effect of pressure, there will be effect of pressure. Here delta n is your delta n is positive and that means that if I increase the pressure, if I increase the pressure, reverse reaction will be favorable. Reverse reaction will be favorable. If I increase the volume, pressure will decrease, pressure will decrease and your forward reaction will be favorable. So, if I increase the pressure, reverse reaction will be favored. If I increase the volume, your forward reaction will be favored. Effect of inert gas, if I keep volume constant, if we are doing that in a closed container, then there will be no effect. But if we take the case of constant pressure, I introduce inert gas such that pressure is constant. In that case, your forward reaction will be favored, forward reaction will be favored. Now, suppose take S2 plus Cl2 gas, this is your SCL. 2 SCL plus 92 kilo joule, 92 kilo joule. If suppose this is given, okay. Now let us think of what is the effect of pressure, temperature, and volume. What is the effect of pressure, temperature, and volume? Now you see this that your 92 kilo joule of heat is released. So, this is your exothermic reaction, this is your exothermic reaction. In that case, temperature will have effect, whatever pressure and volume. For pressure, so looking for uh, looking at effect of pressure or volume at, at equilibrium, we must calculate delta N and delta n is your 2 minus 1 plus 1 which is 0. What does that mean is increase or decrease in pressure will not affect this reaction, not affect this reaction. All are in gaseous phase, all are in gaseous phase, okay. but introduction of Again, introduction of inert gas will also not affect this reaction, whether it is carried out at constant volume or constant pressure. Only thing which is going to affect this reaction is your temperature. And since this is a exothermic reaction, since this is a exothermic reaction, your temperature, increase in temperature will not favor the reaction. Basically, a low temperature will favor the reaction, low temperature will favor the reaction. Now, take another case S2 gas plus I2 gas giving you 2 HI, 2 HI gas and delta H is equal to 25 kilo joule, this is plus kilo joule. What does that mean is the reaction is your endothermic. reaction is endothermic. So, suppose if we are trying to look at effect of pressure, pressure or volume, first we calculated delta n and delta n here is 2 
minus 1 of H2 and 1 of I2 and so this is 0. So, no effect of pressure volume, no effect of pressure or volume. What about others? No effect of inert gas. Inert gas. What about temperature? Temperature will affect because this is an endothermic reaction and endothermic reaction are favored at high temperature. So, high temperature, high temperature will increase the product which is H i in this case, which is H i in this case. Another reaction 2 NO 2 gas giving you N 2 O 4, N 2 O 4 and this is your delta H in negative. What does that mean? This is exothermic reaction. Now, we can see that this is also in gases form. What is delta N? Delta N is 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. It means pressure volume will affect. If I increase the pressure, first thing increase the pressure, what will happen? If I increase the pressure, you, have, you see this is the minus 1. Okay? So, forward reaction will be favored. Favored. If I increase the volume, reverse reaction will be favored. Reverse reaction will be favored. If I increase the temperature, now you see this is exothermic reaction, and in exothermic reaction, you do not exothermic reactions are not favored at high temperature, they are favored at low temperature. So, reverse reaction in this case will happen, will be favored. Another way to remember is that increasing the temperature will shift the reaction toward that side in which heat is absorbed. So, if I take the reverse reaction, in this case, your delta H will be positive or heat will be absorbed. So, dissociation of N2O4 is an endothermic reaction and so, with increase in temperature reverse reaction, this is this dissociation will be favored. Okay. Inert gas, effect of inert gas at constant volume, it will not affect, but at constant pressure, your reaction will be reaction can be affected, reaction can be affected. It will just opposite to this. In this case, your reverse reaction will be favored. Now, last is the effect of your catalyst, effect of effect of catalyst. What will happen? So, effect of catalyst. catalyst on the equilibrium. equilibrium okay. So, what happens when I use add the catalyst? We know this is the potential energy or energy versus reaction coordinate. this is kind of shape we get, this is your reactant, this is your product and this is transition state, this is the transition. So, if we have a reaction and if we do add catalyst, what can happen? We know that 
if I add a catalyst, so in presence of catalyst, this curve will be something like this. What does that mean? Reactant and this is product and this is transition state. So, catalyst basically stabilizes the transition state. So, it went down from this point to this point. So, reaction activation energy decreased, activation energy decreased. So, reaction will be faster, but does it affect equilibria? Okay. Question is does it affect equilibrium? Catalyst does not affect equilibrium. Does not affect equilibrium because you see what is your K? K is your Kf by Kb. K f is your rate constant for forward direction and K b is rate constant for backward direction. K f K b changes when we add a catalyst, but the ratio does not change. Okay. So, K f changes, K f changes because activation energy will be lower and if activation energy for forward reaction is lowered, it means K f will increase, but catalyst also decreases activation energy of reverse reaction of the reverse reaction and so K f also increases. So, K f changes, there is increase in K b increase in K B and increase in K F, but the ratio remains constant K F by K B remains constant and that means that there is no effect of catalyst on the equilibrium. You can understand this from here. So, what happens that you have energy versus reaction coordinates or extent of reaction, you have this kind of curve when there is no catalyst and this is activation energy for forward reaction, this is activation energy of reverse reaction, reverse reaction or backward reaction. When I add a catalyst, what I get is basically So, it is initially suppose this way, it goes down the presence of catalyst. So, initially you have this is E A F activation energy of forward, but in presence of catalyst it decreases to this. So, this is E A dash F. But you see activation energy of reverse reaction also decreased, activation energy of reverse reaction also decreased. So, it was here first, so this is suppose E A for a reverse reaction and now in presence of catalyst this is decreased to this value and when this decreased to this value you have a new E A R which is called E A dash R. Okay. So, your equilibrium constant is this is K f by K b, K f gets affected in presence of catalyst and it becomes K f dash and K b also changes and that becomes K b dash, but the value of K f by K b 
and k f dash by k b will remain same. So, catalyst increases the rate of reaction, it increases the rate of both reaction forward and reverse direction or reverse reaction, but the ratio of k f and k b does not change. So, ratio of k f and k b does not change. And so, catalyst, catalyst, catalyst does not affect the equilibrium, does not affect the equilibrium. So, in a nutshell, we can change the direction of we can control a reaction by changing changing conditions by changing conditions we can maximize the product maximize the product if maximize the product if we have understanding of understanding of Lee Chatelier's principle. And that is why leach adhesive principle is very important when we are dealing with a chemical reaction. Thank you very much.